people welcome to my channel thanks so much for being part of this channel watching me every day and sharing the video if you are watching me and you have not yet subscribed please consider subscribing do all to share this video you might win a soul by sharing this video we have started a new quarter already and the lesson one is crisis of identity today i'm here to give you a summary of the tuesday wednesday Thursday and Friday lessons of the lesson one. The Tuesday talks about the argument of forgiveness. The argument of forgiveness. And the Tuesday lesson is based on Isaiah 118, which reads, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sons are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Amen. And so the previous verses, God stated they are sons. The sins they've committed, how they oppress the poor, and how they neglect the fatherless and don't care for people. How they take bribe. And God made them understand because of these sins, he's not going to hear their prayers when they pray. When they raise their hands in prayers, he will not mind them. Then he, God went ahead and told them that they should repent from their sins. They should cleanse themselves. And then in the verse 18, he's calling them, come. Let us reason together. No matter how deep your sons are, no matter how dirty you, you appear, I'm going to wash you and make you whiter than snow. It's the same way God is calling you and I to also come to him. No matter our sins, no matter how deep, it doesn't matter the sin you've committed. Even if you have committed all the sins in the Bible, God is saying, come and I'm going to make you whiter than snow. In Isaiah 44 verse 22 to God says that I have blotted out like a thick cloud, your transgressions, and like a cloud, your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Amen. So we see that every now and then God is calling us. And God is comparing our sins to a thick cloud that he has blotted it out. So it means that no matter how huge or how small your sin is, God is capable of cleansing you. God is capable of forgiving and making your life Anew. Now we see the purpose of God's sharp words of warning against his people. They are not to reject his people but to bring them back to him. His offer of forgiveness is the mighty argument supporting his appeal for the people to morally purify themselves. So God's purpose of warning Israel to cleanse themselves was to, to forgive them. It's not to reject them and say, because of this, I've cut you off. I don't want to have anything to do. I don't want to have anything to do with you totally. But God is saying, these are the sins you are committing. And that is why your many prayers are not reaching me. Therefore, cleanse yourself. And come and let me forgive you so that I can have that kind of relationship with you where you and I can talk without any hindrance or anything blocking your prayers to me. And even in that case, you don't need to make a lot of prayers or long prayers and the Lord will hear your prayer. We start off in the red, owing a debt we can never repay from the humble position of acknowledging our need for forgiveness. We are ready to accept everything God has to give. Amen. So the moment we begin to accept that we are wrong, we have sinned against God, we are on the wrong path, then it means we are ready to accept his forgiveness. But if you do not acknowledge your sins, then it means you don't need his forgiveness. So the invite is come. God is inviting you to come. No matter your sins, no matter your weakness, no matter how deep they are, he is going to make you whiter than snow. We are moving straight to Wednesday. And the Wednesday talks about to eat or be eaten. To eat or be eaten. And the Wednesday lesson is based on Isaiah 1 verses 19 to 31. When we read the 19 and 20, God says that if you are willing and you obey, you are going to eat the good of the land. But if you disobey and decide to go your own way, you are going to be eaten by the sword. And so the question is, do you want to eat the good of the land or do you want the sword to take over you? God's purpose for us is, is for us to obey and eat the good of the land. The lesson is that, the choice is theirs. These verses then contain a conditional blessing and curses. And so the choice is theirs and the choice is ours. When God says in 
um, when you read the book of Psalms and it talks about the blessings, I'll bless you, I'll do this and all that, they all come with a condition. In Isaiah, most of fear not, I'm with you and all the blessings, they all come with conditions. And so if you're not ready to keep the conditions, then you cannot enjoy the blessings. You can't enjoy the blessings and then the conditions that are tied to it, you will say no. So God, every now and then, makes us know that if we go against his principle, then we are going to be eaten by the sword. But if we obey him, walk according to his principles, then we are going to eat the good of the land. Where do you stand? There is no middle ground. It's either you are on the side of God or you are on the side of Satan. This is not like uh, our politics that we do in, in, in our world where someone who says, I'm not on the side of A or I'm not on the side of B. No. You cannot be in the middle. So God is calling you and I to choose to be on his side so that we will not be eaten by the sword, but rather we will eat the good of the land. We are moving straight to Thursday. Thursday lesson talks about ominous love song. Ominous love song. And the lesson is based on Isaiah 5 verses 1 to 7. When you read Isaiah 5 verses 1 to 4, where God is saying he has cleared his vineyard, he has done everything he needs to do, he planted a choicest vine there and gave it all the attention and the love and care. And what he expects is that this um, it will it will bear good fruits or it will bring forth uh, grapes, but it ended up bringing forth wild grapes. And so in the verse four, it reads, "What more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes?" They did bring forth wild grapes. And so God is asking, what, what, what am I supposed to do that I haven't done? When we bring this into our life, God has done everything that he needs to do for us to live a godly life. He has set the path for us. He has shown us what is right. He has given us all the principles, all the guidance. He has given us the Holy Spirit that we need to rely on. Everything that he needs to do for us to bear good fruit, God has done it. But still, humanity chooses to bear wild grapes and so god is saying what am i supposed to do that i have not done now when you read the verse 5 it says and now please let me tell you what i will do to my vineyard i will take away its edge and it shall be burned and break down its wall and it shall be trampled down god have mercy and so god is saying all that i need to do for you to bear good fruit i have done it but you are still not what heeding to my voice and you are still refusing to follow my principles and bear good fruit and so now that's what i'm going to do i'm going to withdraw from you i'm going to cut you down i'm going to remove the protection that i have been giving you and the devil what will devour you the lesson says that when we sin god immediately does not cut us off from himself by removing his protection and destroying us he patiently gives us an opportunity to receive forgiveness he does not cut off Anyone who responds to him, he appeals as long as there is hope for a response. Amen. And so God, before he will say, I'm removing my edges from you, I'm taking my protection from you, then it means whatever he needs to do as God to give you, to, 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 to bring your mind back to him, to cause you to repent, he has done it or he's doing it. He immediately does not take no for an answer because he knows we are ignorant and deceived by sin. But if he gets nowhere with us, he ultimately acknowledges our choice and lets us remain the way we have chosen to be. And so if you keep on choosing your own way, God will respect your choice and allow you go the way you want to go. He will not force you. And so God knew that he has done everything he needs to do in his vineyard for it to produce good grapes but when they refused to produce good grapes but decided to produce wild grapes god said i'm going to remove my protection my edges from you and you are going to be trampled down if persistently we reject god's appeals through his spirit we can eventually pass the point of no return turning away from christ is dangerous there is only so much god may do because he respects our free choice so please let us not turn away from God. Let us respect He calling us through the Holy Spirit and turn to Him so that He can work on us, cleanse us, and make us whiter than snow. 
we are moving straight to Friday further talk. The summary on the Friday lesson says, when God's people forget him and take his blessings for granted, he reminds them they are accountable to their covenant with him. Mercifully, he points out their condition, warns them about the destructive consequences of abandoning his protection and urge them to allow him to heal and cleanse them. Amen. And so when we begin to take the blessings of God for granted and we fail to perform our part of the covenant, then God will keep on speaking to our hearts and makes up and make us know that we need to come back for he's ready to cleanse and forgive us but if we fail to respond to his invites then the protection will be taken from us and the devil will take charge may god have mercy on us may he help us to hear his voice may he help us to respond to his invitation may he help us to give in to him for him to cleanse and make us whiter than snow thanks so much for watching if you have not yet subscribed consider subscribing do well to share this video you might win a soul by sharing this video bye bye <music>